The movie begins as Cairo Sweet, an 18-year-old girl, narrates what it is to be an adult. She lives alone in her house because her parents, who are lawyers, are permanently abroad. She talks about how she finds an escape in writing and longs to be loved and not feel lonely. She mentions meeting a teacher who is also a writer. Cairo walks into class where Jonathan Miller, a literature teacher, is already in, even though the class won't start for another hour. She tells him that she lives in Lovell Hill, and he is very amazed. He gives her a list of books they will be going through in class, and she tells him she read them all, which amazes him even more. Soon, her friend Winnie joins them, and we learn that this is her second time attending this class. Her stomach growls, and she goes out with Cairo to get some food. After they left, Jonathan checked out the books Cairo brought to class. His friend and colleague Boris gets in and asks what he was reading. The book Jonathan was holding is an erotic fiction, and Boris took it before he started reading it out loud. Jonathan takes the book and goes over to eat the biscuits that Boris made. Boris finds Jonathan's book from Cairo and tells him she is also the only one who checked it out. Back at their house, Beatrice is buried in her work as Jonathan tries to get her attention. He tells her about Cairo and the kind of books she reads. He also lets her know that she has checked out his book from the library, but Beatrice mocks him. She gets a call from Amy, and Jonathan leaves to open some music as she gets angry over the phone. They share a drink as Jonathan starts reciting lines from a book called Under the Roofs of Paris, as he kisses her. As they started dancing and making out, Beatrice's phone rang, and she had to leave. Boris complains about having a terrible weekend as he and Jonathan are sitting on the court. They looked over to the woods, and Boris told him that there could be ghosts in there, and the plant feeds on the souls of the dead. Cairo walks out of the woods and greets them. Both of them kept asking her questions, and Boris offered her some biscuits before he left, while mocking Jonathan. Jonathan asks if she doesn't get scared walking through the woods all by herself, but she tells him she's the scariest thing in there. As Boris walks into the hallway, Winnie stops him and starts teasing him. He stops and talks to her, as she tells him she wants to be in his class, and he can tutor her. Cairo watches them converse from a corner. Winnie tells her that she is seducing Boris, and asks if she is jealous in a sing-song voice. Winnie and Cairo are in Cairo's house while she is smoking. Winnie asks where her parents could be at this time, and Cairo tells her even though she doesn't know how long they'll be there. Winnie asks Cairo to let her dress her up, saying she can be both smart and hot. Cairo is writing an essay to get into Yale, and she couldn't answer a question that asks what her greatest achievement is. Winnie tries to help her, but they can't find the right answer. She finally tells her to experience something worth writing about. Cairo asks her if she really is going to sleep with Boris, and Winnie tells her she wants an older man to do it with, as it will be her first time doing it. Winnie tells Cairo that Jonathan looks at her differently from all the other students, but Cairo said she couldn't believe it. In class, Cairo kept looking at Jonathan. He then asks her to see him after school. Boris is in Jonathan's class, asking about Beatrice and the book she's writing. He is invited for dinner, and Jonathan tells him to shower before he comes over. After Boris leaves his class, Jonathan opens the music and starts dancing. He finds Cairo giggling when he turns around. They sit by the couch, and Jonathan asks if she's been to the scroll sessions at Sally Bunny's, a poetry salon in a Victorian village, and tells her to go on the coming weekend. The reason why he wanted to see her was because of the story she wrote about a reluctant spider. Then he recited some lines from the story before they continued to talk about the spider. He then tells her that she is talented, and offers her a jump start on the midterm. He assigned her to write a short story in the style of her favorite author. He says that it could help with her portfolio for Yale. Cairo tells Jonathan that she read his book and called it Grand and Tragic Romantic Horror. Then she quotes lines from his book. He tells her that was the first thing he wrote, and that he hasn't written anything recently since he got married and started teaching. But Cairo challenges him saying he isn't inspired. Winnie joins them as they're talking. Boris, Jonathan, and Beatrice went out for dinner where Winnie was the waitress. Beatrice asks why their order is not served yet, and Winnie offers a drink on her. Boris and Winnie sneered at each other, and Winnie called Jonathan a boring teacher, to which Boris laughed. Jonathan tells Beatrice that she is Cairo's friend before they discuss about her. Beatrice tells Jonathan that he is better at teaching than writing, and that it isn't for him. They both tell him it's not because he can't write that he's not a writer, it's because he stopped writing and chose to be a teacher. Jonathan was offended. On Saturday, Cairo went to the poetry place Jonathan suggested, hoping to find him there. Soon Jonathan joins her. She asks if he knows all the people there, and if what they're doing is like group therapy. A man named Elliot starts reciting a play as they all listen. After the play was over, Jonathan and Cairo were outside, and he asked if she thought it was going to be bad, and she said yes while giggling. Boris and Jonathan are sitting in their usual place when Cairo brings them coffee. 
Boris offers her a biscuit he made, and she suggests that he sells them to raise money for his team, and that she will help with Jonathan. In school, Jonathan gets a text from Beatrice, suggesting that they go on a trip for the weekend. Cairo and Winnie went by Jonathan's class to find him hurrying to leave. He tells them about the trip with his wife. Cairo asks him for approval on the writer she chose for the midterm. They talked for a bit and he left. Winnie starts mocking Cairo for the way she talked to Jonathan while getting on his desk, and Boris walks in on them talking about it. He says he agrees with the biscuit baking idea and asks them both to help. Winnie stops him and asks for his number to make it easier and faster. After getting Boris's phone to call Cairo, she puts it in her chest and is about to leave, but Boris takes it back. Jonathan is waiting for Beatrice to finish up when he gets a call from Cairo on her phone. He happened to have her phone in his bag and she called to ask him to drop it off at her place. By the time he gets there, it is raining and he asks Cairo to come to his side where the rain is pouring before they kiss. Cairo is in her house watching TV and reminiscing about what happened while Jonathan is sitting at home with Beatrice. Beatrice apologizes for canceling their vacation because of work. After receiving the midterm assignment from Cairo, he went outside and started reading it. What she wrote was an intimate story that was portrayed by them. Jonathan starts to please himself while reading the story. On Monday, Cairo waited for Jonathan in his class, and he walked past her after greeting her coldly. He tells her that she needs to choose another author because her story is inappropriate. He asks her why she chose that materials, and she answers him that it's about them. She tries to explain to him that the story is appropriate in different aspects, but he tells her to write a new story with a new author. Cairo tells him to stop talking to her like a stranger and tell her what he means, so he tells her to rewrite it. And if she doesn't, he will have to fail her for the midterm. He tells her he feels foolish and calls her a child. She tells him that his writing is bad and calls him a nobody, impotent and mediocre, while crying, daring him to fail her. Cairo walks out, thinking of heartbreak and refers to it as a car crash. Cairo went home and drank while crying with Winnie by her side. Jonathan gets home and tells Beatrice he had a bad day, to which she offers him a drink. He tells her about the conversation he had with Cairo and the story she wrote. Beatrice excitedly asks him to show her the story. After reading it, she makes Jonathan say how Cairo described him in the story. Cairo asks Winnie to distract her, and she asks her to text Boris, saying she's drunk and what he is doing. Jonathan keeps on reciting the lines from Cairo's story as Beatrice takes his hand and makes him touch her. They stopped making out when they saw Boris Knox and get in. Winnie tells Cairo that she wants to be liked by Boris and that she wants him to sleep with her. Cairo makes her tell Boris that she's with her and that they're doing what girls do when they're alone at night. Beatrice finds Boris smiling at his phone and asks who he is texting with, but he won't tell her. He replies to Winnie telling her to go to bed. Cairo gets angry and tells Winnie to take off her shirt as they are going to be making out for Boris. They got very close and started making out while Cairo took a picture and Winnie sent it to Boris. Earlier that day, Cairo had sent the story she wrote to the principal. Beatrice gets a call from there and gives it to Jonathan. Boris suddenly decides to leave saying his goodbye to Beatrice. Jonathan learns that the principal got the story from Cairo and tells Beatrice about it and that he thinks that Cairo did it. He says that if she can convince them that something's happened between them, he could lose his job. Beatrice asks if something happened between them as teenagers, which is very dangerous, and if he should know what he's doing. The next few days, Cairo didn't show up to school, and Winnie looked very sad. She asked Jonathan if he'd seen her, but he coldly says he didn't. Cairo and Jonathan are being questioned by the principal, Joyce. Cairo tells her that he gave her the midterm assignment in advance, and that they used to meet before, during, and after class to talk about literature. She said that he was impressed that she knew who he was. Jonathan tells Joyce that Cairo is very talented, and that he gave her mentorship as she is better than the curriculum. Jonathan claims that they know each other, as is appropriate for a student and a teacher. He mentioned the time he went to her place to give her phone back, and the vacation he and Beatrice were supposed to go on. He said that he didn't touch her, and that when she sent the story, he told her it was inappropriate for school. He realized that there was nothing he could say to defend his position. Boris asks Jonathan if he's in love with Cairo before he tells him that he can't identify the line, and that's why he crosses it. Then they into an argument, and Boris leaves. Jonathan confesses to Beatrice that he's suspended, but soon they get into a fight where it escalates and gets personal. 
Jonathan calls Beatrice an alcoholic, and she tells him he's boring, and that's why she drinks. That was only the beginning of their fight. Winnie goes to see Cairo and asks what she's doing to Jonathan. Cairo tells her that she's testifying against him in front of the school board because he underestimated her. Winnie tells her she will testify against her, but Cairo blackmails her with the evidence she has of her and Boris. Cairo tells her that this is her greatest achievement. The movie ends as Cairo stands on her bed, reading her essay about her and Jonathan, as we see Jonathan losing his job, Boris and Winnie walking past each other as strangers, and finally Cairo finding Jonathan and crying as she sees him in school. Even though she's hurt, she says that she believes what happened has shaped her into something new, a hero, a villain, and a writer. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.